Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Marshall Kramer Show. I am Marshall Kramer, and this is my show. Doing a little bit different here today. Like I, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting to the other parts of the show, other things I'm interested in, you know. If you're new to the Marshall Kramer Show, we talk a lot about self-reflection, psychology. It's, it's a huge passion of mine. Um, again, I've, I've had an episode recently about the film. We talked all about the Batman, the new recent movie, and we got some upcoming guests, some new guests that do some things um, that the average people don't, and I think uh, uh, it's going to be very interesting picking their minds. So look forward to that. Very excited for that. Um, kind of a gloomy day here. We had, oh, we had such a beautiful streak of spring weather these past few days. Mother's Day wasn't even that bad. Oh, no, no Mother's Day actually started. That was yesterday. Mother's Day, it started to rain. But, um, yeah, this I woke up today. It was storming, and uh, it kind of was a little spooky. There's a little bit of a um, fog and, 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 and mist and whatnot, so I felt kind of spooky. So I wanted to tap into another hobby of mine, which is horror. And uh, just like the Marshall Kramer short films, you know, the only one we got out so far is called The Shape. You can I'll, I'll pop it up here on YouTube, but you can check that out on my YouTube channel, Marshall Kramer. It's a, just a five-minute, five-and-a-half-minute short film. Uh, we have another one. It's an action film, though, called Relentless. It's th that there, too. And we got many, many more coming. We got lots of work going on here. Um, yeah, working with some good people. But want to talk a little bit about short stories. Oh, so I, as how, how can I do this? How can I tie in horror to a podcast? I can read short stories. And I'm a huge Redditor. So um, one of the Reddit threads, I don't necessarily follow, but um, but uh, I do check into it time and time. And that's uh, Scary Stories. And uh, I just want to kind of read it. You know, have some fun. To be honest, to preface this, this is my first time reading these. So it may not be the best fluent. It may be a little bit choppy. And the story may be stupid. All right? The story may be dumb. So maybe maybe I'll read through a more than I think I need, and then we'll go back and and and, and cut out and, and and pick the better ones. But I'm also going to, if you're on YouTube here and you're watching, I'm going to pop them up and take a screenshot of them. But I'm also going to read um, who um, was the poster. You know, to give them credit because these are none of these are my stories. But uh, maybe I can read them in an entertaining way. So the first story is posted by Snow Lemons forty two fifty three. And the story is called, The Time I Saw a Time Traveler. <laughs> I work at a distribution center for Zoomies. And when I was still on the morning shift, I would have to get up at 4 a.m. to make it because I lived 40 minutes away. And one morning, as I'm driving on the freeway going north, I experienced something I can't explain. I was on a three-lane highway and I was on the middle lane trying to get over to the one on my right. As I look over my shoulder, I notice a big semi almost halfway behind me, so I speed up to get some space. But as I continue to turn my head to look, the truck began, began to become harder to see. Keep in mind, this is the early morning and it's still dark out. But I could see his lights on the sides, but the more I look back, the less I could see it, the less I could make it out. Until it hit me. I then realized that the truck had disappeared into thin air. There was no way this can be explained because there was no way for him to get off. There were no exits near us. I looked everywhere, rear view, side view, and windows, and I could not see the semi truck. How does a giant truck just disappear like that? Must have been a goddamn time traveler. Now, um, that's interesting. So 4 a.m. she gets up, right, or whoever it is, the person gets up and starts driving. And they're, they're, at this right here is probably somewhere around 4.30. Now, I have heard many times before stories like this, paranormal stories, you know, time travelers, aliens, you know, even, you know, ghosts, whatever. Um, a large amount of them are reported seeing them in between the time they call the witching hour somewhere around 3 a.m to 4 a.m maybe early you know a little bit into five maybe and um if you think about it for the average person what time is that it's for a lot of people it's the middle 3 a.m 3 30 4 a.m it's the middle of your night you know it's your peak deep sleep and then um you know otherwise it's early morning you're groggy and uh so maybe that kind of explains it away i don't know if you've ever you've woken up groggy some mornings where you're just out of it right but if you ever woken up from a from a sleep or a nap where you wake up and you look at the clock and you still have more time you know it's not your usual time to get up in the morning or you like oh I, I want to nap for an hour you know I just nap for 35 minutes but you wake up and you feel fine you wake up and you feel fine but come on we're going back to sleep now you know what I'm saying so then you you know go back to sleep you, you fall back asleep and then you 
And then you wake up. I've done this before. And then you wake up and I'm like, where am I? Everything's fuzzy, dude. I'm so groggy. I'm like so out of it. It's like I'm in a lucid dream. I'm like, what's going on? Where am I? Who did this to me? What? What? It's like literally, I've had people who, who've, who've woken up, um, you know, typically wake up at like 7 a.m. And they woke up at like 5.45 on a Sunday. And then they, and then they looked at their clock. They go, oh, I still got time. And then they fall back asleep. And then they wake up at like 7.05, um, you know, on a Sunday. And they usually wake up at 7, right, on, on, a, on a typical week. And then also like, oh my God, oh my God, I gotta go to work, I gotta go to work. And they'll like start rushing. Maybe they'll call their boss and be like, hey man, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm gonna be late. And the boss is like, what? Um, it's Sunday, man. You're good. Oh. You know, so that's probably what it explains it away because I'm not gonna keep explaining all these away because, you know, that's the, the fun and the spookiness. But um, yeah, maybe it's that, you know what I'm saying? Because that's interesting now. Because that, that could be something stupid. But you would think, even if um, even if it was just a straight, I don't know, how many trees were there? Was it a straightaway freeway? Because, yeah, even if he pulled over, you, he'd have his hazards on or he'd still have his headlights on, especially if it's in the, in the middle of the day. Um, I don't know, man. Shit. I don't know. Again, the other thing, too, is that um, I think a lot of people say these things, the alien stories and the paranormal stories. Not that I, they do it for attention, but not that I, like, find them far-fetched. Like, aliens? Like, they could totally exist. Extra extraterrestrial intelligent life? Absolutely. But my mind always goes like, you know, maybe it's the ego. I go, why aren't they visiting me? Like, Mar Marsh has got some shit to say. Talk to me. Probe my booty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could use an enema right now. <laughs> and, you know, get them hemorrhoids right out of this motherfucker, you know? Hey, talk to Marsh. It could be that ego. It's, but it's the same way with people like the religious stuff. People say, I swear to God, I talked to God. I swear to God, I talked to Jesus. Um, a, 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 a story for me is, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I'm about to tell you something doesn't exist. Um, but as far as we know, but... When we were younger, my sister's three years younger than me, so maybe I was 12 and she was nine. And by tw 12, I knew Santa didn't exist. Oh, my God. Shoot me. I'm sorry, kids. Kids, close your ears. There's a bunch of kids listening. This is a huge kid show. Huge kid show. It's like the Wiggles. Uh, Teletubbies. But, um, but, yeah, when it was Christmas Eve night, the family would come over. My mom's grandparents would come and her brother. So it would be three extra people in the house. So, you know, our rooms would be shared. And uh, me and my sister used to stay in my room with my grandma. And... Uh, she swears one night when she was nine, swears to God that she saw Santa on top of the roof, swears to God. And I swear to God, I can't remember. Again, the mind is so powerful. So these are my two things. This, this, the reason I'm here is because I think people either do it for attention or they do it for this reason. She swears to God she saw Santa. She's like, I saw Santa. I saw Santa. Now, she could be lying and could be doing it for attention, but that's just not really like her. I, I imagine it's not. I imagine she really thinks she saw it because the brain is super powerful. And um, eventually, you know, years comes by and I asked her that. And she's, she's like, yes, I do remember that. She's like, no, obviously. And I... Again, the brain can be tricky. I think I remember that, and I, and I do think it was an airplane. I think it was an airplane with a bright light. Just airplanes always flow over a house, you know? And, um, you know, maybe it was just that. I don't know. But uh, that's the same thing with people, like, uh, with religious experiences. Swear to God they saw God or, you know, all that different stuff. I, I, I don't think, like, all of them are lying. There are some. You cannot believe everybody. There are some completely doing it for attention. There's there's big name stuff that's been on the mainstream news. That that that, that what what is that one like ten years ago where that guy he saw the UFO but he made a UFO in his own backyard and did he send his kid up in that thing? Oh, I can't remember. The dude literally made like a inflatable UFO and then said he saw it X Y Z. Took pictures of it and then it turned out to be a huge fake thing. So a lot of people do this shit for attention, but also like this person here. Early in the morning and shit, you know, you're groggy, you don't want to go to work, you're maybe in a bad mood, whatever, you're just, like, out of it, man. So, then you see something like this, and then it kind of makes it fun. Like, this shit's fun. If, if You know what I'm saying? You, you, I don't have any more, any more ghost stories, but I did have two when I was younger. But now, as I get older, I kind of explain them away. But also, maybe that's exactly what they want you to do. Just, you know... Maybe, oh, it's starting to rain, baby. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go fucking close my windows. I gotta go close my car windows. I'll be back. Sunny days. Cause everybody loves them. But tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? Can you stand the rain? Yeah. Whew. I'm out of breath. I think I saw a ghost on the way up, too. Woo, yeah. All right. Next one. So, again, mind's playing tricks on me. 
Ghetto Boys. It's fucked up when your mind is playing tricks on you. All right, so the next one. The next one was posted by, holy shit, I'm out of breath. Woo, damn. All right. The next one was posted by stranger underscore at underscore night. Stranger at night. I don't know if I already said it, but if you're watching on YouTube, I will pop all these stuff up if you want to look at the Reddit or post it or you want to read along with me. Otherwise, sit back and listen to this story called A Cat Plans. A Cat Plans. You can see it. I'm not reading it wrong. Again, dummy dums, dummy dum dum dums. All right. It was showtime. I raced to the couch and settled in my favorite spot, waiting for Mommy and Bobby. Bobby was right behind me and didn't take long to plunk himself right next to me. Mom, Mom, hurry, he bellowed. Mom, of course, took her sweet time, faffing around with her tea, clattering in the kitchen. Ugh, come on, woman, we're waiting here. Eventually, she too settles in on the couch, we switch on the TV, and it's time to catch Better Call Saul, our favorite TV show these days. I had heard Mommy say on the phone she didn't like Better Call Saul and only watched it to bond with Bobby, and it made me twitch in my tail in rage. <laughs> Mommy kept fussing around on the couch, not paying attention. She is going to miss key plot points and then keep asking stupid questions in this kind of running commentary. Oh, oh my goodness, why is Mike there? I didn't get it. Oh, I can't, I can't with this judge. No, 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 not so. Listen to your father. Oh, the poor boy. Oh my God. What did he do? No! She gives a little scream in horror as blood splatters on the screen. Bobby gasps. My tail twitches again and I resettle my paws. Mommy pats my head in the wrong spot. Her hand is shaking silently. I hiss quietly. Then she gets up. The sound of screaming and men... men Yelling comes from the screen. She goes into the kitchen. Bobby yells at her. Just put it on pause, Bobby. She calls back. Bobby pauses the show. I look back up at him. He strokes my back, and we both feel calmer. I want to know what happens next. Mommy bustles in back onto the couch. Her weight makes the couch sag, and I have to reshift my body to feel comfortable. Okay, you can start. And then a second later, she is at it again. Can Kim give her hair in any other style other than this stupid loopy bony tail? How many shots of men's shoes and feet do I have to watch again? I thought this was a show about drug lords, not men's fashion. I want to kill mommy. Just like the men on the screen. I want to tear out her throat with my sharp teeth leave torn veins and gore dangling from a wide tear in her neck. Bury her in the backyard and watch better call Saul in peace and quiet. Just me and Bobby. I look back at her and look at Bobby. He looks at me and we are planning the same thing. <laughs> Oh, we got a demon cat. So, a cat plan. So, it, this person is a dumbass. It, it should be a cat's plan. Okay, did anyone get it was a cat? Even when it said, even when it was in the middle and said, it made me twitch my tail in rage, I still didn't get it was a cat. I didn't get it was a cat all the way till the bottom, till the, till the, my tail twitches again and I resettle my paws. I go, oh, this is a damn cat. A cat wrote this book. Ah, dude. I've been listening. First off, cats. That's a good one there because a dog would never do that. Cats are freaking predators. Oh, my God. There is something in their DNA. I don't care how nice of a house cat you have. I don't care how sweet of a house cat you have. Cats can be very sweet. But you let them out, and they literally go right back into their primal form. They start stalking. They start hunting. They'll literally... You watch them. They'll start stalking the bird up in the bird feeder. They'll start stalking a squirrel climbing up a tree. And then they'll start stalking something in the, in the tall grass. And you won't even be able to see it. You'll just be like, what? What is it? What is it? What does it see that I don't see? And all of a sudden you see it pounce, jump, and then come right out. And it's got a goddamn mouse. You're like, what the hell? Where, where the fuck did the mouse come from? No, no. Cats are literally freaking brutal, dude. They're 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 stone cold killers, man. That that last paragraph, though, I want to kill mommy, just like the men on screen. 
Oh, God, I look back at her and look at Bobby, and he looks at me. We are planning the same thing. How old's Bobby? Huh? How old's Bobby? Is Bobby like six? No, watching Better Call Saul. He needs to understand. I don't know. But he's living with his mom. I don't know. Hey, you could be fucking 35 living with your mom. I don't know. But damn, how old's Bobby? Where's Bobby? Is Bobby going to get this shit done? Huh? Where's, where, where's Bobby contributing this, huh, cat? Hmm? What's he going to do? He's going to, he's probably going to grab the shovel, bury the mom. Um, yeah, so let's get to another story. Again, the, I, this is my first reading of these stories, so that one I really liked. The first one, uh, I guess, uh, those ones don't spook me. Paranormal stuff doesn't spook me until maybe it happens to me, and then I'll be a believer. I'm a believer. I'm definitely not, I'm one of those people who are not attached to their beliefs or ideologies, man. If, if I believe something my entire life, and then all of a sudden it switches, and it's, it's completely opposite, hey man. That's just how it is, man. I, I am not one to, to, uh, I'm a, I'm a seeker of the truth and, uh, you know, whatever that truth is, even if it's something I completely disbelieve in or, you know, that, that something I never believed in, something that I never thought was the truth. If it is, it is, man. Shit. Prove me wrong. Um, all right, let's get to another one here. Let's do this one. This one is, um, by Eloquin Torsala. Again, it'll be on the screen. And this one is called Mother, Father, and Billy. Father was tall and strong and muscular and firm and hairy. Holy shit, Jesus, did a goddamn third reader write this? And, and, like, like. And he play fought with Billy ever since Billy was tiny. Mother encouraged them and told Billy to stop being a wuss when he cried out in pain. Mother always said feminists were making all men weak and girlish. And together with father, they wanted to make sure Billy did not grow up being weak and girlish, but strong and manly like father. Whenever he was around the house, father would play fight with Billy. And during summers, they would jump in the pool together where he would teach Billy to swim and play fight in the water. What fun, cried out mom, watching her two gorgeous males be watching her two gorgeous male beasts, one small and one large, trying to drown each other. The water splashed in a beautiful sparkly arc through the warm summer air and broke over her dress. Oh, you two, cried mother joyfully, her eyes shining in the same color, shining the same color as the pool. I've half a mind to jump in and join you right now. Lord knows I'm wet enough. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that it won't make it, and that it won't make a big a bit of a difference. Oh, shush, Billy, you're fine. She never joined. The years passed and the play fighting continued in the bedroom and on the bed, in the living room, on the couch, and always in the pool during the summer. Father always beat Billy, pinning him down making him tap out. But it was becoming a little bit harder. Father didn't think Billy noticed. Hell, he didn't notice himself sometimes. But it seemed to take him a tad longer to get Billy down. Only sometimes. Billy was getting taller and stronger too. Everybody noticed. He had surpassed Mother this year, although that's not hard. As mother remarked, looking up at her growing son with shiny eyes, the color of a freshly filled summer pool, father saw her looking into Billy's soft but hardening face, and his gut twisted. Billy's skin was silky smooth, still peppered with soft golden hairs on his face. They were roughening. His muscles were coming in lean and taut. Billy had started hitting the gym every day earlier in the year, and now the pool was filled with shiny blue summer water. The first warm day was the first water f play fight of the summer. Look at them. They can hardly wait to get at it, laughed Mother as they tore off their clothes and dove in. Okay, can we stop here? What the hell's going on with this goddamn family here? Okay, this sounds a little ancestral. Ripping off clothes, play fighting. Mother's wet enough? Oh, God, let's get back to this story then. Jesus. Father and son went for each other. Mother watching every move with glinting eyes. Billy felt stronger than he had ever felt before. 
all the hatred and fears of the years gathered in his arms as he went for the kill. Holding father's head down and trying to pin his flailing limbs with his own legs, father knew it was now or never. His rage at growing old and weak and Billy becoming strong and manly broke through in one odd, ungodly, violent move. He got the upper hand and held down Billy's head under the water until Billy stopped moving. Shit. Okay. So the old, uh, the old, um, student outshines the teacher. Student outshines the master. Um, okay. That sounds, that sounds very interesting. I like that one. Uh, a little bit good. I, I was rooting for the sun. God damn it. But, um, I guess, uh. I guess that's just how things go here in the um, in the in the family. There, Happy Mother's Day! <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to that mother. Uh, what a what a wonderful present she 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 heard of. Uh, damn. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. The old father one. That's um that's something not just fathers but everyone struggles with. With growing old, you know, you kind of lose your place in the world. I remember I had a couple of gerontology classes, which is the study of aging, and I had to do a few uh, internships and whatnot um, at uh, retirement homes, nursing homes, or whatever. And, um, you know, basically, a lot of people struggle with that. They feel, you know, it's old people get told all the time, rest, rest. You ain't, you're good. You did all your work, man. Go have fun now. And it's like, you know, humans find a lot of purpose and motivation in working, you know, and, and, and uh, especially for such a long time. Think about like athletes, dude. Like a lot of athletes have excruciating trouble, even celebrities of all sorts, poli- uh, all sorts, politicians as well, especially like the, the, the higher your high was. You know, the harder it is for it to be taken away. You, you you don't feel like the man anymore and stuff like that. So that's kind of tough. Now, I don't think it justifies killing your son. But, you know, hey, man, everybody struggles with, with different things in their life, man. That's just kind of how it is. But Jesus, I thought I, I thought that was taking a different twist than it was. I thought there was a little bit of kissing, kissing. But obviously it was a little bit of fisting, fisting. Oh, not that type of fisting, but punching, you know, ba ba ba, Like a scary, scary dad. Okay, the next one I got is by Gildardo. And this one is simply called hay. Hay with H-A-Y. Like hay. Hay is for horses. I spent my summer on my sister's new house that had a nearby animal farm as my sibling needed the extra hand. Work took over most of her time. The, you know, it was the price of leaving her abusive husband. But I was more than happy to step in. The place was nice as it could get saved for an occasional sighting some of these people, again, I'm reading it for the first time. Some of these, thank, uh, thank God these people aren't actual writers because this is just horrible. Um, I understand some people like aren't in English and stuff like that. Read that last one I was reading when it said color, it, it, it has that U by that OR. That's not how we sp- fucking spell color. Jesus. God, I'm getting angry. I'm just kidding. Not really. <laughs> this lighting, if you're watching the visuals, it's green. You won't like me when I'm angry. All right, I'll keep going here. I have to reread that one. The place was as nice as it could get for an occasional sighting of rats. My sister promised that it was only till she saved enough for a better place so we were left to settle with the rat poison. I smelled decay on the third night I spent in my room, but I failed to find the source. The little buggers must have consumed the poison and died behind the walls. It was the only logical explanation. Air fresheners, scented candles were all brought during my chip trip into the town and they helped with easing the awful stench some days though the smell would be unbearable and sleeplessness would keep me company salvation comes in the form of our neighbors the elderly owners would welcome us with open arms and allow my little nephew to help with the feeding we watched in amusement as he carries a handful of hay towards the hungry creatures only for the dry grass to fall halfway through It was becoming a routine of ours to bring pies to the owners while they were giving the liberty to pet, while they were giving us the liberty to pet and learn all about animals. Everything had been going well until I noticed that my nephew had started to put the hay in his pocket before we went home. He tried to be sneaky about it, leaving some under his bed when I thought he wasn't looking. I dismissed his behavior as something a child his age would do and made note of it to inform his mother. 
as I had wanted him to know that taking this wasn't yours without permission, and it wasn't very nice. And also, in my want to be a good aunt, I talked to him during one of his bedtimes. Tomorrow we'll go to the farm and we will say what we did then. I'll say I'm sorry and I'll never do it again. I gave him a smile in return as I patted the blanket, making sure he was comfortable. I only wanted to feed the goat. That sentence made my motions come to a halt as confusions took over. He must have sensed my bewilderment, so he sat up and inched closer towards me as if trying to relay a secret. Ice and dread ran in my veins as the lightness in his voice masked the darkness of what was said next. It's for the tall goat that stands in the corner of my room. It visits me every night. Breathing suddenly became difficult as his revelation, as the atmosphere in the space tar started to turn to suffocating. I wasn't given a chance to process one small thing before the maggots in my stomach became a bomb. Sometimes it's in your room too. Oh, 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 oh damn! That one got me chills. And never, yeah, and so I can see this one too. I can see this one too. Behavior. She used a U R. <clears throat> she she her behavior was I O U R, and so we just do I O R. So it must be another foreigner. But damn, this is better writing. This was some descriptive stuff. That was good. So that's the goat. It's uh, what's the? I can't remember the goat. Um, uh, I can't remember the goat's name, but it's the it's the typical goat with the with the horns going all the way back and the tall devil goat. Uh, a lot of the fucking. A lot of the it's this it's part of the satanic ritual, right? It's it's that it's that goat. I can't remember what it is, but it's the, it, there is a goat name. So interesting. That was good there. That one got me. I think I <clears throat> I think I could kindly get it when uh, when he said I just wanted to feed the goat. I go, oh shoot, that's scary. But that last part. Sometimes he's in your room too. Like <laughs> damn, damn, that shit would be so scary, man. <laughs> oh my god, that shit gets me. That was good. I like that one. Let's do this one um, for the sake of modern politics. This is called The Ukrainian Kid, um, and it's done by Scary Stories. I was playing Roblox. It's an online game. I just looked it up, and I had no idea what that was. And just so you know, I knew Ukrainian because I lived there for three years. A kid came over to me asking if I wanted to be friends in Ukrainian. She made a lot of spelling mistakes, so I was thinking she was very young. You also make a lot of spelling mistakes, goddammit, so don't judge her. <clears throat> I said sure, and I asked her name. She said her name was... Oh god, that's not even in my language, holy shit. She said her name was Sarah, which was... Oh, never mind, <laughs> never mind, there it is. Which is pronounced Iris. We became best friends over the past few years, and we called all the time. When the Ukrainian and Russian situation started, me and Iris started to lose contact slightly. I was worried, so I called her one month ago. She was six, by the way. She answered and told me she was scared of the bombs and wanted it to stop. First off, how old are you? How old is this man? And why the hell are you talking to a six-year-old that you don't know. There's only one man, two men, two men that can really be friends with a six-year-old. That's a goddamn father or a grandfather, okay? Even an uncle that might get a little conspicuous here. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing with a six-year-old Ukrainian girl? All right, sorry. Seriousness back. Dramatic music build. I told her she was going to be okay. After three hours of us talking, I heard bombs on her side of the phone. She started crying and curled into a ball. I told her to go find her mom and dad, and then she told me her dad was fighting, and her mom died. Her big sister was getting food, and the walls and ceiling started to collapse. I watched her die. I heard her screams and the way she cried, begging for someone to come save her. Nobody did. All right, that's just that's just depressed the hell out of me. Jesus Christ, that wasn't a scary story. 
That was just sad as hell, man. That's like a real story right now going on. Damn. Maybe, maybe next time I'll preface these stories to make sure they're bangers. That's a sad story, man. Oh, shit, dude. Again, unanswered question about the six-year-old, though. But um, they'll look conspicuous on that. But uh, sad story. Uh, geez. Again, this one is posted. The next one here is posted by Scary Stories. The story is called Outside My Daughter's Window. Real story. In quotes. Or, or quotation. Or on um, parentheses. I was eating my dinner in my room. And I cannot describe the fear I felt because it was so antagonizingly scary. It was raining hard against the windows of my bedroom. I have four windows. My windows are specifically at the front of the house and where my bed is positioned, I can see quite a large gap between my curtain and the window. I was seeing things, but I kept it to myself and just ignored it, thinking I was imagining it. To make it clear, I was eight years old and did not count and could not tell what was real and what was fake. I decided I was going to try and sleep. I closed my eyes and drifted off. Not even an hour later, I woke up in a cold sweat hearing thumping against my window. I didn't look. I just ran out of my room to my mom's room crying her name. I completely forgot about her night shift and buried my face in her pillow crying. I heard someone knock on my door at the front of the house. I thought it was my mom, so I poked my head out the door. Our door was made of glass, so I saw exactly who it was. It was a seven foot tall man in a brown and green outfit. I bursted out crying when he kicked down my door and started breaking the hinges. My daughter Sarah died at eight years old. I thought it was suicide, but I found her diary covered in blood. If I just stayed, I could have saved her. I feel sick, and I'm going to post this everywhere because I want the guy that ate my daughter. <laughs> spooky, spooky, spooky. So, first off, creep, confused on who was writing the first paragraph and then who ended it. Was this this mom? I don't know. So, oh, okay. So the first paragraph was in quotes. It was all about the eight-year-old. And then the final paragraph was about the mom of the eight-year-old. Um, first off, leaving an eight-year-old home alone, that's goddamn scary. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and second off, suicide? You thought an eight-year-old committed suicide? That's some crazy shit right there. Um, here's a short one done by Jake828292. Shortly titled, What the Hell? Just so you know, when this happened, I was eight or nine years old and was lying down on my bed. How did I wake up again in the middle of the night? As I said, getting up. Why can't I feel my legs getting off the bed as I turn around to see my bed? Who is on my bed? I took a foot closer and seeing myself sleeping, I look at myself realizing I'm in an out of body experience. What the hell? As I say, backing off, I take a look at the hallway. Who is the... I don't get to say anything. And he runs at me, and I wake up, and I still don't know what happened to me. What do you guys think? Okay, that's an interesting one. So that's called the hag. That's called, that's called the hag, or sleep paralysis. He basically experienced that. I don't know about the outer body, but he, 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 he couldn't feel his body, and then he saw his own body, and then when he turned in the dream, or you know, whatever, the dreamlike state, so the, the, the outer body part, not the sleeping part, he sees this monster, and he couldn't even finish his sentence, who the hell, you know, and as this monster starts charging at him, and, um, and therefore, and then he wakes up, you know, from a dream. But that's actually called the hag, or sleep paralysis. It's, a, it's another paranormal thing. They used to, um, they used to use the hag to scare kids. Um, basically staying in your room at night. I don't know if it was something stupid on like, like you got to leave your socks or shoes by the door or you have to have your door closed. I don't know what it was, but it was basically, it was basically a folk story um, to scare kids into staying in their room and not bothering their kids and not bothering their adults at night. Uh, again, it's another eight, eight or nine year old one. Like I've been saying before, I do think a lot of times these, that people aren't 
making this shit up. They really experienced this stuff to themselves and they really, you know, felt this stuff. Um, you know, again, the power of the brain, me and my mom and dad were just talking the other day about the power of the brain. Uh, we were specifically talking about injuries and we're talking about myself and I told them some other stuff about some other stories I was hearing of of other people's anecdotal stories. Uh, and you know, even, even doctors and stuff in an ER, this one specific one, um, this man came in, he was a construction worker or whatever, and he jumped down or whatever. And a massive nail went right through his boot, right through his, and all the way through his feet, you know, it went clear through. So they brought him to the hospital, whatever, and they, you know, search, they, they cut off his boot or whatever, they take it off. And when they finally get to see the nail in, in, into the bare foot, it went right through the gap of his foot. And this man was in excruciating pain. They gave him morphine. It didn't work. They gave him a higher dose. It didn't work. They had to give him so much dose that it actually made him pass out. And then when they see the nail, it went right through the middle of his toe um, or right in between his toes where that cartilage is kind of and where there's no nerves, like there's no tendons. So there is no pain. It's painless. It's like uh, you're getting your ears, right? It kind of hurts to get snipped, but they don't hurt afterwards. It's, you know, it's, 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 there's not like nerve endings there or strong nerve endings, whatever, you know, X, Y, Z. And uh, so the doctor's like, he's actually not in this excruciating pain. However... You know, psychology would tell us that he really was. He he was freaking out so much that he really felt that type of pain. But um, it's also really interesting because when we were talking about myself, right? Say I fell down on the ground and I hit my head and I really wasn't in that big of pain. I was like, oh my God, the world's ending. Oh my God, my head, my fucking head. You know, I'm just being a big baby. I'm, it's like so over the top. And like I'm, and, it, and I, I exacerbate the feelings of the, the little bump that I had. I made it fucking like terrible, you know? But then my dad also said that when I actually had pain, like when I, in freshman year, when I ran in, inside, when I ran a slant and literally snapped my leg, literally snapped my leg. And it, in, in just 10 minutes, it swole up or whatever. And I ended up, you know, breaking my leg nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like that pain. I'm like, all right, when's it coming? I'm good. I, I can hold on to this. I can hold on to this, you know, or like a shot. That was my worst one, man. Oh my God. I was that baby, dude. I was that baby freaking out, even pricking a finger, man. I remember one time I had to get my finger pricked. I probably was in fucking four or I was probably 14 years old Four, I was probably 14 years old and I had to get my, pr- my finger pricked and I was acting like a prick. I was just crying hysterically. No, 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 no. And then you end up getting it and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, that's the pain. Oh yeah. That's some pain. It's just a little sharp. Oh, it's all done. Okay. I can take that easy money. But just the fear itself was, oh my God, so much worse. So the, the brain is, the brain is very powerful. So I don't know what to believe of any of these stories. Does, does that, that one with the eight, wait a minute, that one with the eight year old girl says real story. So first off woman, if this actually, if you're actually trying to be real, no one ate your goddamn kid unless they brought him home and it was some Buffalo Bill type shit, some Jeffrey Dahmer type shit, and they were they were cutting and filleting your your eight year old daughter up. But uh, no one just there's no monsters that swallowed your daughter whole. Or, or there was, and I know nothing. And the paranormal weird, the paranormal world, is much bigger than I ever imagined. Oh my god. All right, here's our last story posted by Horrorgasm. Hopefully you give us a Horrorgasm today. This one's called, it's a little bit longer, but it's be a nice one to finish up with. And this one is called Rick and Marvin. Marvin took another paranoid glance up and down the dark and deserted street, checking once more for potential witnesses that might observe him moving the body from the car to his uncle's apartment. Uncle Ricky had always been there for him taking Marvin in after his parents' tragic death several years previous on the night of his 12th birthday. Now he found himself indebted to Ricky, not only financially, but with a deep loyalty as well. Which weighed heavier is up for debate. The corpse was bloated, a heavy-set man in his late 30s, and Marvin had to drag the roll carpet up a flight of stairs, and he wasn't even past the stoop yet. The four stone stairs leading to a grimy, splintered front door were small. But so was Marvin. It took him a few minutes, dumping the relatively obscured body, packing it into a dimly lit corner. Marvin peered upwards at a flickering bulb illuminating the second floor containing Ricky's mortuary, a thinly veiled cover for his illicit business. 
Rick? Marvin called up, voice wavering. He knew how angry Rick could get when he was late with delivery. Ricky, I need help. He's too heavy. Fucking hell, Marvin. How many times do I tell you, you don't give the body's pronouns, you fucking dullard? Ricky presented himself atop the stairs, being heard yelling before being visible in the gloom. Marvin could see he was clutching a bottle again. They're just it now. Aw, aw, jeez, Rick. Aw, jeez, aw, jeez, sorry, Rick. That's my Morty. Marvin could feel the disdain radiating towards him, and he decided he better deal with the task at hand lest Ricky decide that he should deal with Marvin. I know there's nothing left in them and all, but they were someone at some point. Ricky descended the stairs like a battle of hell, forcing his nephew into the corner with the corpse, which was beginning to smell, having been out of the morgue freezer drawer for too long. Rick always stressed the importance of a properly refrigerated corpse. It makes the whole process easier. How many times, Marvin? How many times? Ricky seethed the words through his stained surgical mask, flailing his arms wildly as he spoke. They're fucking dead, Marvin! Dead bodies! That makes them an it, okay? Huh? Oh, oh, okay, Rick. I understand. Good. Ricky put his hands on his young nephew's shoulder, adopting a fatherly position as he lowered his whiskey-stained cloth mask. You know I'm only hard on you because I want you to succeed, right? Yeah. Great! Ricky backed off, examining his newest prospect. Let's get this body to the lab before it starts to smell even worse. We've got a client in Reno who wants kidneys, and this rotter needs harvesting before they notice it's missing. With the cadaver unrolled, Marvin took the legs, and Ricky pulled it up by the arms, guiding the naked, chalk-white specimen into the sea of stainless steel, where it be dissected and butchered and sold off to the highest bidder. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Well, that was, um, didn't really have a big, big bang, but that would be creepy to see, man. Just a, an uncle and a, a, a nephew mortuary body dissectors, body salesmen, black market, black market body sales. I don't know what they get the bodies. They steal it from some sort of morgue and bring it up to their own. That's also an, that's also another common um, duo is an older gentleman and then a younger, um, more in, easily influenced and vulnerable young man. Um, I don't know if you ever remember the story of the DC sniper, probably one of the most infamous killers of all time. Uh, an, an older man took this young man and tricked him into you know I, I think he I think the young man was from the army or whatever he had he had um, skill in shooting I don't know I don't remember but. Um, Basically, he tricked them, and they and they were so stealthy, man. They uh they made a po- a position for this kid in the back. So you know, you pull the seats down in in a, let's say a sedan. You pull the seats down, and you're exposed to the trunk. They made a hole right out of the trunk where he could just sit there and snipe, and um and yeah. So it, it, that's a, that's a common thing. It, it happens a lot. I've seen it happen a few times in stories of criminal minds and stuff. I know that's not real life, but you know, art imitates li- art imitates life. So. Yeah, that's another interesting duo, the, the old, the old wise um, leader and then the young vulnerable man just looking for a purpose in his life and he can be tricked into anything. But yeah, that's a trick one. Rick, Rick and Marvin. I was just thinking of Rick and Morty the whole time. That's what, oh, 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 gee, geez, Rick, gee, Rick. I haven't, I haven't seen the new, um, the new seasons of Rick and Morty. But that's, uh, that's all I really have here today for that serious story. I hope, I hope they were a little bit good for you. I hope you enjoyed them a little bit. I did, and I sure enjoy reading them. I'll definitely follow that Reddit thread a little bit, uh, Reddit thread a little bit more, and uh, I'll bring it on the show a little bit more too. I'll tidy this up, added some music, and make it super enjoyable. If it's not enjoyable for myself, then I probably won't even post it, but I will post it. <clears throat> Dude, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, some up and coming stuff. I got some new guests coming. We got some, we got some interesting stuff. Um, I'm ready to start learning from other people, you know, not just always be the one talking. So look forward to that. It's better stuff is coming and I'm gonna do some traveling too. 
and I'm going to video and podcast there and talk a little bit about the places I visit. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for tuning into the Monster Camera Show. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were spooked out a little bit, and who knows if the sun's out or whatever it is for you, but I hope you were spooked. And uh, until next time, my friends, take care, and um, don't be too scared, and uh, scoot, boot, toodaloo.